365 is back at Mobile World Congress 2024. It's the third year back. We're here in the IBM booth, and Dan, this show is already on fire. I mean, literally, the hallways here are jam-packed. We're talking network transformation, and as you would expect, a lot of AI. And in the run-up to this last week, what did we talk about? We're going to be the themes here at Mobile World. I mean, of course, you know, it's not just going to be about AI. That's right. But as we, even the 6.5 this year, our summit is going to be focused on unleashing AI. We're going to see AI as a theme that's going to be part of every conversation. And look, it is a little bit, you know, cliche at this point. It feels like everything is AI, AI, AI. But the fact is, Pat, it's going to change the world. It's going to change the network. It's going to change the way we work. It's going to change every experience that people have. So maybe it is hype, but maybe it's not. Yeah, it's really about what are the tools that are going to improve not only the outcomes to the consumers, and this is very much a consumer show as well with all the handset and end devices, but more importantly, the edge and also the network. Absolutely, Pat. Well look, we've got a crazy busy week here, but I am so excited about this yeah. conversation that we're going to have right now. Let's bring in our guests. Uh, Steven, great to see you. Alex, great to see you. This is wonderful. The group that basically underwrites this entire event, GSMA, and the head of industries at IBM. How are you guys doing? Fantastic, wonderful to be here, really great. great. It's our third year here in the IBM booth, so exciting. <laughs> yeah, Happy to have you here on behalf of the GSMA. Thank you. Yeah, it's great to be back, and it is really great to see the, the event really at full momentum, of course. You know, it, there was a little bit of a comeback period, I think where everybody had to be comfortable getting back out there, but this year, I think it's, full motion, the event is full steam ahead. Let's start off with full announcements that GSMA and IBM are making together. Alex, tell us a little bit about the, the, the news. Well, now that we are back, and we are really back, uh, <laughs> we're, we're super excited about the announcement because uh, we see this as a way to try and democratize AI, make sure it's not just the big guys in developed markets that have access to it. So we're starting small. Uh, we've got two things that we're focusing on. The first is around training. So together with the expertise of IBM, we've announced something called our GSMA Advanced Learning Platform. So we're doing AI courses for telco. And the second thing we're trying to do is to challenge innovation in telco use cases. So that's through our, our Foundry Challenge as well. No, I love that. So Dan and I opened up this segment. Uh, it, it's kind of a joke, but kind of reality in that it feels like all we've talked about the last 18 months has been AI. And like Dan astutely pointed out, Sure, there's a little bit of hype there, and you have to get people excited so they're in bed, but there's a lot of reality. And part of turning something from hype into reality is truly understanding what some of the challenges are. So, uh, if I can hit you first with, what are some of the challenges you're seeing or, or some of the problems that you're trying to solve uh, your clients with generative AI? Yeah, I mean, I think it's it's very interesting. Look, it is a fascinating space. I think the the, there are three kinds of challenges that we see that you need to overcome as a network operator or as an equipment vendor or whoever you are that's using AI. The first one is a leadership challenge, in fact. Yeah, if we think about it, there's going to be massive systems of distributed innovation inside of these companies. First off, you're going to turn all of your ordinary users into content creators. So those content creators are going to be using AI, but they need to make sure that that massive distributed innovation, that domain, actually domain experts, are now going to be the coders of the future in many respects because the barrier to entry for coding is so much lower. So how do you put the governance around that, right? So there's two types of governance. What's the, what's the board that you're going to run to be able to actually ensure that you've got the right kind of use cases and are they ethically bound within policies? And the second thing is how are you actually managing uh, all of the different use cases you've got in the organization. Are you able to inventory them and are you ha able to have them uh, scrutinized and inspected if necessary? So that's kind of the first challenge. Second problem is the economic challenge. What's the return in invested capital? How do you actually understand what the cost of inferencing is and whether to buy, borrow or build your own models? And then the third problem is technology. What's the stack that you're going to use How's that stack going to evolve over time? And what's the best way to incorporate uh, a number of different uh, opportunities to use different types of models within that stack? So a number of challenges to overcome as an industry and to learn about, and that's what we were trying to address. So Alex, I mean, you're not an analyst and you're not a vendor, 
you're, you're a CTO, you actually have to make this stuff happen. What are some of the challenges for your point of view, maybe incrementally from what were discussed? Well, some of the problems are the same. I mean, Stephen already mentioned ethics. So we've done a lot of work around that as well. We have our own AI ethics playbook. But I think part of it is just with any new technology, you've got to remove the fear factor. And with AI, that fear factor has been dialed up to 11, right? So the fact that you can make, not, not a data scientist, not a machine language expert, but you know a regular Joe into one of the content creators that Stephen's talking about, I think that's really important. So by giving people a, a little bit of training, but also access to the right tools, you know, right. things like what's the next, I think you can go a long, long way. It's very interesting. I love that you said the fear. I mean, look, there's a lot to learn still. I mean, IBM, for instance, Pat, you and I have both given a lot of credit for their governance, their focus on governance early on. You know, the ability to deploy a model and, and understand how it's grounded, understand how it's developed, understand how it works. I mean, we've seen recent news, and I won't be specific, but recent news just about major concerns about how AI models are developed and how they yeah. work. You know, we've got this kind of continuum of trying to address bias, and you got this continuum where you can over-rotate to it. You got this, you know, we've got to make sure that we find balance. This has to be able to add and work in the real world, yeah. both for businesses and for consumers, and we have to trust it. And that's one of the things that's, that's really, really interesting. Now, you started off, Alex, talking about democratization. Okay, and so democratization, as I see it, would be something like GSMA building so that every telco, every service provider that you work with has access to the information, the learning, the skills, the tools that they need to be successful. Why is it so important in your mind? Because, you know, frankly, it's, it would be easy to just maybe focus on a couple of the biggest companies. They've got the money, the resources, but you, you seem to want to bring it to everybody. Well, look, in our industry, we've been dealing with a bunch of gaps since the early days. Remember when you couldn't get a signal tone in lots of places? That yes. was the coverage gap. <laughs> then we have like the inclusion gap, the gender gap, the usage gap. We don't want an AI gap. We don't want just the top 25 telcos in the world to use this. There are 700 telcos in the world, and you know all of them are our members. So we have a duty of care for those people, but it's also to make sure that anybody can get involved. Uh, because it's wrong to concentrate this sort of stuff in the in the hands of just a few people in a few countries. So we're we're really excited about it, and we think through the use of the tools and the training, that's a great start. We've got other plans which yeah. we won't go into yet, but you know it's a really good start. We want to avoid an AI gap. Anything to add to that? Yeah, no. I, I think look, the the one thing to remember is again, if you turn users into content creators and you make the technology as pervasively available as possible, what you can guarantee is that the greatest ideas will not come from the biggest players in the world. They won't necessarily come from the smallest players, but they're going to be somewhere where you don't expect it. So the beauty of the program that we're actually releasing, which effectively gives GSMA members an opportunity to run a very extended trial of what's an X platform, which enables them to come up with different ideas on how to use the technology in any particular different domain. The most important thing is you get that technology into domain experts. The domain experts are the ones that actually understand the problems that they've got in their ordinary ways of working. And they're the ones that say, I wish I could do something and whatever that is, finish that line no pun intended. Yeah, so at that point there, what you're able to do is give that technology to those people and they're the ones that are going to come up with a great idea. So we believe that if you put it out there like that, that's where that's the best way to make the industry turn towards an AI first type of, uh, uh, industry uh, sector. So I want to do a double click. We've been talking pretty at a high abstract level here, which always is a good place to start. When it comes to AI, and there's a lot of segments to, to the overall value chain here, right? You have the end device, which is connected to the edge network, which is connected to a different network, which is typically connected to the core, and then everybody's talking to each other. Where is the force multiplier? Where's the biggest value in AI uh, going to hit? And let will start with you. Well, I think the simplest answer and the glib answer is <laughs> All of oh. these and more. Yes, uh, I mean, my favorite, obviously, favorite way to answer any question. As always analysts, and. analysts, we always ask, answer it like that. <laughs> but look, obviously, this thing starts in the sort of the super sort of end where most of these models are trained in sort of data centers and everything else. But you mentioned edge, right? And I think for us, that's pretty exciting to take some of this power uh, to the extreme edges on device. And if you walk around this show, I think practically a, every major terminal is vendor is talking about what they're doing. But yeah, if you want. If you want an AI that's highly performant, highly interactive, you're going to have to use the edge, and that's good for telcos. So yes. we're super, yes. super okay with it. 
Any, uh, anything to add yeah, on? Yeah, no, I, I think that again, what we're doing is we're actually moving away from just thinking about large language models and we're moving much more into small language models. Small language models are going to be able to use uh, much more refined sets of data. Those data, that data is often going to be privileged types of data, which means that actually you can come up with more niche use cases. And that's great because actually if you think about it, that will be a small case, it will be at the edge of the network. It'll be actually working on more readily available uh, hardware, for example. And so again, what you're going to see is proliferation of use cases and a proliferation of models at different places in the network as well. So again, with those new architectures available to you, you completely change the way in which AI will be implemented across various different intersections in the network. Yeah, one thing with certainty that I think is really good for everybody uh, at this event is generative AI capabilities and quite frankly, machine learning is very much actually a better uh, golf club uh, to use for certain workloads. It's going to mean more data. And more data means goodness. And it, it has since we started with the first G and even be, well actually, there wasn't a whole lot of data before, that was all calls, but the more data, uh, the better. And it is interesting, I found it, as how even the on-device AI capabilities and what they can do to optimize the network, and then on the network side, what it can do when they have a certain type of a handshake, there's a lot of discussion around that that I find incredibly uh, interesting. And not just from a density point of view, let's say, on the edge network, uh, but also in the quality of service and the speed of answers that are going to be the expectation once we get two, three years down the road. Yeah. Super exciting. Yeah, it's, uh, it's interesting, and I think what you were sort of alluding to in simplest terms is uh, AI is not really new. I mean, the machine learning capabilities, uh, the telco service providers have been using these for a long time. I'm sure you've been talking to them as a, as a CTO of GSMA for a long time about how to implement Generative AI kind of brought AI into the consciousness of the globe and has created this overarching trend that is now the theme of, of Mobile World, the theme of Davos, the theme of, you know. But the thing is, is in the end, this is all about productivity, it's about efficiency. And, and one of the things that drives productivity to any industry is, is ecosystem. And so this is one example of a partnership. Yeah. But, but Stephen, I'd just love to get your take, you know, how do you see partnerships proliferating beyond this to be, you know, is the industry going to all come together? Uh, I know you had the AI Alliance. You yep. saw the AI RAN thing got announced today. There was another, I'm saying like, so partnerships seem to be invoked. Yeah, it is, and I mean, and again, it's really important that we actually see those partnerships flourish, and they are. I mean, if you look just at some of the work that we've been doing in the last year, particularly around some of the edge use cases, real-time real RIC, for example, where you're going to have the X apps and the R apps actually driving different quality of service. Well, that's a constellation between IBM, a Juniper, and a Nokia, for example. You, that, that's yes. another example of where you get domain experts in different areas, security, of course, the network performance, and then the AI from our side. You bring that together, you certify it, and you can take it to market and scale. That's a perfect example of the kinds of constellations we're going to see, and then we're going to see them much further back. Actually, how do you actually understand where the, where the relationship between a GSI, a partner like IBM's technology, and somebody that really knows the customer care space inside and out, for example, how do you transform that? And what I'm really most excited about is that we focus less on just basic use cases around uh, uh, cost control and cost optimization. We're seeing growth and experience type of cases coming to the fore. That's where we get to change the industry and the way in which we can uh, drive new revenues as well. And Alex, I, I presume that GSMA is thinking endlessly about the collaborations and partnerships of the thousands of companies here. That's, that's basically in our DNA. We convene the industry, yeah. so it's an ideal partnership because if you think about it, we have about 700 telco members, we've got 300 others and we're getting more all the time. They're spreading into every other sector. You know, 5G is a great door opener. This whole industry 4.0 thing gives us permission to go and talk to the manufacturers, the coal miners, I mean, you name it, we're doing it. But if you think about it, we're not one company. We're an organization of companies. So if you take IBM's expertise, and you partner up with 700 telcos around the globe locally, and that gives you the kind of scale. And in our industry, that's all we ever talk about, scale. So it's really important. Well, Alex, Stephen, I want to thank you so much for being part of the 6.5 here. Uh, we love having these conversations. You actually were the first for the event, but we will have <laughs> many, go. many more. Uh, <laughs> Stephen, Alex, let's talk. Let's have you back again soon. Looking forward to it. Thanks so much. It's been a pleasure. Thank you, guys. Cheers.
All right, everyone, thanks so much for tuning in here to the 6.5. We are in the booth at IBM, at Mobile World Congress 2024. We're talking about AI, but we're also talking about the proliferation and the innovation that's going to go into network transformation. For Patrick and myself, hit subscribe, join us for all our other shows here at Mobile World and beyond. But we, for now, got to go. See you later.